Hello everyone, welcome, Mark Molacic here and welcome to this new episode of our series and this time I'm going to talk about some of the new features which are available now in uh, April-May updates uh, of uh, Premiere 2022. Okay, so let's get started. Let's start by making a new project. So I'm going to go File, New Project and you're going to see a totally new redesigned uh, dialog box for importing the content here. So we've got this new content here. So in the top left corner, you can name your project. So I'm going to call it test may, for example. Okay, you can choose the project location. So I can just go to choose location. I've got some files on the desktop, which I'm going to use. I'm going to select this folder here. Okay. You can actually import the clips at the same time. This is something that's totally new. So we've got all these clips here, which you can just select. You can actually roll over to preview what's in here. So actually, if I navigate to my desktop and I've got some files here and say assets, for example, we do an audio files and let's say storyboard rough cuts and for example, desert videos. Okay, so you can roll over to preview the clips. Now on these ones, there's not much going on. Okay, just to give an idea. So say if I pick these images, for example, it could be any kind of clips. You could select them, you can, you know, highlight them all if you want to import all of them, if you wanted to. So it's a new way of importing the content. Uh, there's also a slider here in the top where you can just make these funnels smaller if you have loads of clips in a folder. Okay, but I'm going to leave it as it is. Okay. On the right, we can copy media to a different location. We'll leave it for now. You can also make a new bin if you want to. So I could make a new bin here, say, I'm oh, going to call it storyboard. And you can also make a new sequence now as well. So let's say, I'm going to call it the same storyboard. Got all the clips selected and I'll click create. This is going to make a new uh, project and also import some content, make a new bin and make a new sequence at the same time. So I've got a sequence here with these images right on the timeline. Now, not something, let's say, as sophisticated as the automated sequence, in this case, for a sequence, but it's a good start. Now, if you want to edit your project, this remains the same. So, on the file menu, we have project settings, the same three tabs, and this dialog box that you get in here is exactly the same as the one we had before. This hasn't changed. This stays the same. Okay? So, you can always edit it in this way. What's also new? In the top left corner of the screen, we have these tabs. So we've got a tab for the import. We've got our edit tab that we're working with when editing the project. Let's go back to the project panel here. And we also have this new export tab. So when you export it now, you can just go to the export tab and you've got a brand new export here. It's all integrated in here inside Premiere. Uh, this does make things a little bit easier because as I always keep reminding all my delegates on the courses is when you're exporting in a standard way, so you go file, export media, which is now not available here because we're in the export dialog box already. But with the file export media, it doesn't do anything unless you have your sequence or your timeline selected. You don't have to worry about this anymore. Yeah. As we had before, we have the options to export different online platforms. This hasn't changed. Okay. So you could say go for YouTube, for example, you can turn it on and you got the options available. <clears throat> or if I pick Facebook, because people often ask about the Facebook, you got the options where you can log in and, you know, authorize and you can choose uh, what page you want to upload it to. You can put a title, you can a description, you can have the video being deleted from the local drive when it's finished exporting. You can also choose a preset you want to use. So you can choose the format and you can choose a preset as well. So there's some presets here as well. Okay. But I'm going to just do a local export or show you the local export. Okay, so if I turn it off, leave it as a media file. The same options as before, <laughs> just everything in one dialog box. So again, you have the format drop down menu with different formats. H264 is typically what we want in here. So stick to H264. Okay. 
OS265, possibly, and you can choose a preset as well. The presets have been simplified. We had many more presets appear by default with H264 as an example here, but you still got more presets here. So if you click on it, you get a dialog box here, which has loads of presets in here for all the different platforms. I would say even more than what we had before. <laughs> okay. You can also search if you're looking for a specific preset. Otherwise, you can just scroll through the list to find something you like. Let's say if I can search for Vimeo, for example, I've got some presets for Vimeo. Vimeo 720, Vimeo 1080, and so on. Let me cancel that. Okay. And let me go back to the edit mode for a moment as well. Okay. What else is new? You know, we used to have these uh, workspaces appear on the top of the screen, which are gone now. I remember the first time I saw it, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, oh no, because this has always been an amazing feature, and I've always kept telling all my delegates that I wish we had it in Photoshop, you know, or Illustrator, InDesign, and we never had. We still don't have that. Well, and now Adobe removed them from Premiere? Well, not really. <laughs> you got this button here for the workspaces. It's what well, what they did is you need to re-enable it. It's not enabled by default. You need to go down to uh, show workspace tabs, and you get these workspace tabs here. So I can expand it to access all these different workspaces here. They're not visible by default, strangely enough. Okay, so it's here, and it's the show workspace tabs. Otherwise, you have the usual where you can make new workspaces, edit workspaces. This hasn't changed. Okay, so they're here, no panic. Here's one more new feature. This button here for the quick export, where you can quickly export your sequence, and you can choose where you want it to go, and you can choose a preset as well, okay. and you just hit export. You know, you can estimate the file size as usual, so it's just a quick export. If you just want to make a quick export as an MP4 file, uh, without going through the export settings in here. Okay. And finally, one more new feature. We now have this, like a proper full screen here. There's a button here, maximize video output, so I can click on it, and it's like a proper full screen. Should be, got some drawing problems here, but there's a full screen, and you can use the escape key to go back to a normal view, okay. Okay, I think this is the major new features in April 2022, end of April 2022 update to Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I'm Marek Mulajic from marekmulajic.com. For more information about my courses, have a look on my website. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Or subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. And hopefully see you soon in another video. Bye-bye for now.